How you guys doing? Came across this verse, John 5, 24. And this is the way we've read it in the King James Version, the KJV, for years. Saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And when we look further into this verse and we look up the Greek, that is not exactly what he's saying. When we look into the Greek, we look up the, for, for where the word it says hear, barely, barely saying, I say unto you, he that heareth. We look up the Greek for that. The Greek is akuyuo. I can't pronounce it correctly, okay? Sorry. And it says, it means understands. He, barely, barely, I say unto you, he that understands my, and then instead of the word word, we look for the Greek and it's the word logos, and it means reasoning. So barely, barely, I say unto you, he that understands my reasoning, and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death into life and um how, how do we come up with that when we look up when we look up the word akuo and we look up the word logos and you, i know i just butchered that greek word by trying to pronounce it but how do we come to the understanding well you know first of all we don't omit verses of scripture to match what you want to believe we don't start we, we don't we don't when we make a doctrine or we're not make a doctrine when we're learning doctrine right we have to consider every verse of scripture because every word of god proves true so if every word of god proves true and every word of god is true how do we know what how do we know what's false doctrine from what's true doctrine well real doctrine and when you start getting into you start getting into false teaching and start getting the heresy when people so, start omitting verses of scripture to match what they want to believe. We don't do that. No. You have to consider every verse of scripture, right? Because every word of God proves true. Who, who, who says, where in scripture to say you get to start taking verses out of God's word to make up, to make something up what you want to believe? We don't get to do that. That's not, that's, you don't, you don't get to omit verses of scripture. That's not, we can't do that. You know, that doesn't make any sense. You end up in, her, you end up in heresy and false teaching when you do that. So it says, I, I want you to read what I wrote here, make it easy. Notice the Greek translations in that verse. That is a more truthful and accurate translation. And if you understand his reasoning, you will understand his doctrine being able to rightly divide the word of truth. And how do we get to that? How, do, how does one get to the point where they can rightly divide a word of truth? Well, you, God comes and baptizes you with the Holy Ghost, when and if he does. And he anoints you. And you're given an unction from the Holy One. You can look all that up in Scripture. It's all Scripture, and that's what happened with me. And you'll see it right under the comment section. I'll put it under every video. This verse, John 5.24, does not give a license to go on sinning willfully. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Hebrews 10.26. Many people preach a false grace today, teaching people that all is covered no matter what you do, which is heresy looking diligently lest any man fail the gra of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled, Hebrews 12, 15. And, he, and this is Hebrews 10, 29. Of, of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who has trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was, was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the spirit of grace. And right over here, 1 Corinthians 15, 2, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached to you, unless you have believed in vain. So this is telling us someone can believe in vain. Uh-oh. And here we go. Romans 9, 21. Have, the potter, have not the potter power over the clay, the same one to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Romans 9, 21. Remember the tares are professing Christians. The tares in the church are professing Christians. Those are believers. Those are people who say they're Christians. They walk like us, they talk like us, they act like us, they use the same language we use. They, they're in the church, they're professing, they're professing Christians. And the wheat grow up right alongside the tares. These tares are people who think they are saved. And here's a verse from Proverbs 16, four, the Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. And, and let's go back to, to John, to the, to the verse in, in, uh, in John, right? And let's talk about this. Okay, so how would we ever be able to ever begin to understand God's reasoning? It would be through the Holy Scriptures he has given us, of course. Jesus even teaches us through his word that he can give us understanding in the Scriptures. Luke 24, 45, 1 Corinthians uh, 3, 7. 
and so on. So to understand true Christian doctrine, we must rightly divide the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15, without sitting in the seat of the scornful, Psalms 1. Scornful meaning that one that does not consider everything. His word teaches us to consider everything, Psalms 1. So when we do consider every verse of the Holy Scriptures, only then can we begin to truly learn Christian doctrine. John 7, 7, 17 says, Sanctify them by truth, that word is truth. This tells us that his scriptures are truth, and Proverbs 30, 30 verse 5 tells us that every word of God proves true. So why, wouldn't, so why then wouldn't we consider all the truth when we are learning Christian doctrine? Wouldn't we oftentimes, if not all the time, end up in heresy if we begin to omit verses of scripture? Would omitting verses be because those certain verses of scripture don't fit what we like to believe? When people do that, they are calling the verses that they omitted and or did not consider, they're calling them a lie. And God's holy word is no lie. The, doc the doctrine has to work in light of scripture. There is a new covenant and an old covenant. Let's keep in mind that one is taking place of the other, and so rightly divide the word of truth concerning the New and Old Testament scriptures. Jesus' words are eternal, so all the scriptures we have will be around forever. His Old Testament scriptures did not just go away. It says uh, on 1 Timothy 4.13, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. And the New Testament is not a, cover is not a covering for willful sinning. It's not. And uh, that's what I got on John 5.24, in case anybody ever has a question about it, because I did. So I did the homework on it, and there you go. And I hope that, and I hope this has been a blessing. I hope it's been edifying. I hope it's encouraging.